Right, so what am I talking about today? I'm talking about the TCP IP stack. Now what this is, is a set of standards that's used to allow data to be sent from one place to another. Okay, so it sounds dead easy. You've got a picture file. So I've got my picture file here with a smiley person, maybe a, not quite so smiley person. I've got a picture file, I want to send it along. And it's a couple of megabytes, this picture file. And if I decide to send it from one computer to another one, um, there's going to be a lot of ones and zeros. There's going to be lots, several million ones and zeros. And the problem is, if just one of those ones or zeros goes wrong, the picture won't work, the picture will be broken, and so we'll have to resend it. And we'll have to keep resending it until it goes through perfectly with millions of bytes. And that might be a number of times. So we'll have to send much more data than we need to. So that's no good. What we do instead is we cut it up into small pieces or packets. So we slice it up into little bits and we send each bit one at a time. So this is packet one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Lots of packets, okay? And what we need to do is we need to send these packets. Now when we send these packets, they're not necessarily going to arrive in the right order. And so we need to put them back in the right order. So there's lots of information we need about these packets to make sure that we send it right. So what we can do is this. We've got our packet here with our data. Okay, so I'll have a heading packet. We've got our data. We need to add some stuff to our data. So there it is again, and we'll add a bit on there on the front, and that will have the information about uh, which packet it is, so which number. So you've got ordering. You might have some error correction, some parity bits and things like that. Extra on top that goes along with it. Okay? So we've got a bit more, a bit of overhead on the front, that's fine. The next thing we need to know is where is this data going to? So imagine you've got a network with 20 computers. We broadcast this file to everyone, and we have to know which computer it's going to, which computer it's addressed to. So we need to add, again, we'll do this here. We need to add on the front some addressing details. Okay, that might be the IP address, that kind of thing. Sender's IP address, so we can send an acknowledgement that's been received, those kind of things. And then finally, what we need to do is we need to actually send it through the computer. So far, we've got our file. We've added some stuff about what packet's what. We've added some stuff about where it's going. The next thing we need to do is put it on the network, physically on the network. It needs to go through the Ethernet card, through the wireless card, through whatever transmission medium we're talking about. So we need to add one more piece of overhead. And that is the overhead that actually puts it onto the network. Um, so this is to do with... Um, linking it physically, so it's the physical link, which I've written the wrong way around, so I'm going to rub that out and write it better. Okay, so the overhead is to allow it to be physically um, put onto the transmission medium, okay, so physically, um, stumbling on all your words a bit, never mind, but that's the idea, okay, let me think of a better way. It's hard with this pressure of a camera filming, you know, it's not as easy as you'd think. Um, a good way of describing that would be, so we've got the addressing data, we've got the, um, the order of the packets, error correction bits, and we've got the actual, the physical overhead. Okay, and that's necessary to physically actually put it onto an Ethernet cable. Um, you've got some things that, you know, this is the start of a transmission, this is the end of the transmission. Some extra bits of data that go on the front. Okay, so you end up with actually quite a lot more data than you originally had in your packet. Now these three sections of overhead are a bit smaller really. The data would normally be quite large in comparison. So it's not to scale this diagram. But this principle of adding extra things on is quite important. And we need to describe the different... Um, layers or the different processes where this happens. And the way we describe it is really, really simple. I've got a nice acronym to remember it, and that is that all terrorists irritate llamas. Okay? All terrorists imitate, irritate llamas. Okay? And that stands for application transport internet and link. Okay, so application, transport, internet link. So we've got our original picture. Quick reminder. Okay, we split it up into packets. That packet is sorted out by the application on the application layer, and we get the data. We then at the transport layer, we add on the extra overhead, which is things like what order the packet is, how many packets there are in total for this file, some error correction, stuff like that. Um, the technical name for this section here is actually the TCP 
or UDP. Um, UDP being for single packets, where the whole file can be sent in one packet, TCP where it's multiple packets. And this is a little more information than you need, but if you've heard of TCP and UDP, that's where that comes from. That's this kind of stuff here. Um, the internet layer will be things like your IP address, sender's IP address, receiver's IP address, so we can send acknowledgements, things like that. And then the physical layer is the stuff to put it, the link layer is to put it onto the physical transport medium. And then we travel along the cable to the other end, or we travel along Wi-Fi to the other end. At the other end, we strip off the, the physical layer, the link layer, in order to actually access the data itself. First thing we look at is the address. Is it addressed to us? If it's not, we ignore it or pass it on. If it is addressed to us, brilliant, we can access it. We then look at reassembling the packets in the correct order. And we do the error correction check that the packet doesn't need resending because it's got corrupted somehow. And then finally, we put all the data together once we've got all the packets and we reassemble the picture at the other end. And that is the TCP IP stack. Okay, now if you go and Google it, if you go and look on Wikipedia, things like that, there's some quite useful information out there to get some more detail on this stuff. Be a bit careful um, because as well as the four layer TCP IP stack, there's also something called the seven layer ISO model, which you don't need to know about at this point. Okay, it's a more complex, more broken down um, look at how this kind of stuff works. It's a gross oversimplification, but the point is if you come across the seven layer version, just ignore that because you don't need to know about it right now. What you need to know about is the four layer TCP IP stack, and all you need to remember is that all terrorists irritate llamas. Dead easy.